so uh, i'll be taking everyone through two uh, week worth of uh, challenges today first is create a custom na- na- navigation this i find it can be useful when we are talking about a report that has like a lot of tabs in it say 18 or 19 tabs so this sort of helps in uh, navigating through it easily say so suppose this is the first tab and i can just search in here to go to the ne- next tab and all of the uh, other tabs are hidden as you can all see um i won't be making the entire dashboard like all, all of the tabs i'll be just uh, showcasing how to how we create this how we switch to uh, all of these tabs this so uh, let me just begin quickly by it the data i'm using is um in okay yeah the data i'm using is this this is a web page this is basically a pdf page and i'm taking directly from here this is a 2017 com- community wellbeing rankers and there are a couple of data in it i'll quickly take you through the power bi file here actually i have done a lot of uh, data modeling in here and i don't want to get into it because it's because it's a lengthy process and that's not what i'm showcasing but let me just take you to the data file that i have this is the raw raw data uh we have ranking we have uh, communities index where will being index score and then we have rank based on different pa- pa- parameters like a- elements it's called basically in here purpose social financial community physical and the last column it's uh, it's about quintile i have actually created a different column for this because you can see it's not exactly in a good way so uh, from this raw data i have created these three data tables one uh, with index score and i have separated state from community and i have added a quintile quintile basically works in like this way uh let me check the file again yeah so they have defined quintile like this if the well being index score is below 39 it's highest for quintile it's if it's below 76 it's second and so on so based on that rule i've created that in here i have data by element where uh, i have element name purpose social financial community physical and its value and lastly elements so i wanted to actually have a element description to see how it's working uh, like what an element basically means so i have added all of that and i'm closing it so what i want to show you is uh, i've actually created yeah so i've actually created this tab by itself because it's a sort of le- le- lengthy process uh, as i said but uh, let me just start with how basically i did i, I created an uh, yeah i created a shape and this is basically how it is and to have the icons that i'm showing in here for that i actually went to the uh, powerpoint we have and mm, i had a okay i might have to delete it later. so no pressures i quickly summarize how it's done yeah so i basically had to insert an icons and whatever say suppose uh, since i'm using a home page right now so i'll take an overview page and in here uh i can select say this home and insert now what i need to do is i'll i'll increase it okay this is a dog house not not exactly the home page i'll accept it but yeah and i'll save it as a picture so and it's yeah, it's necessary to see that i need to save it as jpg files otherwise it won't work you can see that i have saved a couple of pictures like this and after i've saved this i'll go back to my power bi and i'll insert in here yeah so i can take how however many pictures i want and i need to uh, shape it well and add it in here so you can see that this is a sort of like a lengthy process to add all of the icons in here which is why i did this all all already now let me show you how exactly this works right uh, before that uh, there's one more thing that i need to do which is to have a selection pane this i have formatted initially this, this actually shows a shape and all of these are images so i have to rename all of this and uh, order it in a way that if i am not using if, if i am not clicking it with the mouse if i am just using a tab it should work in that order so it's a layer order in here and a tab order in here 
So say suppose I'm clicking this and if I press start, it should go to the next one and so on. So it should work like that. Yeah. So this is how this is basically the layer order part and tab order part. I have done that already and I grouped it all as well. So it will be easier to select all if, if I want to do that. So say suppose I'm still selecting everything because what I need to do is um, let me just take it to the final stage one more time. Yeah, this one important uh, thing is if I'm using this, like if I'm having this pane in page one, I have to actually create this entire shape in all of the pages that I have. Um, okay, so uh, if, if I'm taking it to the next step, it also needs to have this uh, line, this shape. So if I take you back to this, so say, uh, say suppose the first app is overview so i need to have this tab in here as well and in here as well so to quickly select it all i'll choose this and it's all selected then i'll copy and for the purpose of showing how it's done so i'll paste in here and this all works out well. now uh, how exactly am i uh, using this as tabs to click to the next page so um, for this okay i'll close the selection pane in here this part is done and I need to double click a particular icon and I have to click on the action part and when I do that I want it to not be used as bookmark you and it's not that page na navigation and where do I want it to go is overview so this is exactly why I needed this entire pane in all of the tabs because when I'm clicking it to overview it should show like this yeah I have also done one thing that whenever you click on this one particular say we are talking about overview it will take us to this page and it will highlight the background to let us know that we have selected this so and it's not just clicking so I actually press ctrl and click so when I do that as you can see it takes me to overview if I do this again like in here community it's gonna take me there and but if I click in here, it's not gonna work. So how it works is in every of these tabs, I have to click on the action part and I have to make sure that it takes me there. So in here, the action is off. I have to switch on the action, use page navigation and I want it to take me to overview, which is already set. And now if I click this, it will take me to home. So these are, uh, why am I, is showing this in here because this is sort of a lengthy work to add all of this in here there's one more thing like once you have added all of the image you have to select it all and al align in here like in the modeling no okay if i select all of it it works like that i'm not sure how it's selecting it now okay yeah, well, basically, if I select all of the images, there is a way in which I can align this in center and in vertically. So we know that if, if you have added all of the shapes in the same size, so it works like that. This is basically one part that I wanted to show. I haven't uh, really made all of the dashboards and everything, but when it's com completed, it sort of works like this. Yeah, This is one thing. Uh, there is also one more challenge that I found a little bit interesting as I said when we are talking about a lot of reports that we have with only numbers and, I, and we want to quickly add a couple of graphs in it. This is sparkling, this is a very small thing. So it was released in December 2021 and I thought that it could be a good way to uh, analyze it. So for that, it, uh, the data set is very simple. Let me quickly take it up. This is the data set samples in Superstore. I think uh, you all might be familiar with this. It's a very sa simple sample day database. So I have all already loaded this in here. And um, okay, yeah, I have already loaded this all in here. So how it works is say, suppose I'm creating a table with category and segment and lastly sales. Okay. So it, it gives me the sales value regarding uh, sum of sales value for one per particular segment and one particular category. And I want that, I want to have a quick sparkling system. So this is a uh, feature that is already in Power BI add a sparkling. You have to make sure that it is uh, picked as yes in the options part. So it should be in preview features. Yeah, sparkling. So if it's checked, it will show in the option. If it's not, it won't. So uh, say suppose I'm 
using add as backline and I want it and <coughs> ordered it and as months. This is, this is a sample thing I'm using. You can do it obviously in any way it is required. So like this we have it. And there are many ways in which this sparkling can be changed, like formatted. So, so suppose I'm going to sparkling and uh, in the line chart in itself, I want to increase the width, decrease the width, or maybe I want to change the color, whatever, of course, that, that all can be done. In, it can also show a couple of markers. So maybe I can show it at every point, but it looks a little bit uh, like it, a lot of points are shown and it's not giving me any particular thing so I don't want it at every point and I don't so uh, yeah I said it should work so maybe I want only at the highest point maybe I want only at the lowest point or maybe I just want it at the last point or I can have multiple as well so uh, say suppose we are only trying to have like the extreme data points highest and lowest so it can work like that this is one I maybe I do not want a line chart maybe I want a bar chart so it is in column it can be used in a column like this and it will show uh this is one part secondly so this is this is the straight away feature i have not manipulated anything like this is the feature that we had but now i don't want it as a table so suppose i want it as a ma matrix so for that i'll select the matrix in here and we have this okay uh quickly change the column subtotals to off okay so we have this right and it what is showing me now is up in the main matrix we give it's giving me for one particular category how the uh, spark line is shown and say i also want one more thing to be added okay first of all let me just uh, change this because it will create confusion later so what i'm doing is uh, Yeah, so this I have done is by order date because it's going to create confusion in a while and I want another sparklines again in sum of sales but this time I don't want it by order ID so uh, order date I want it by shipping date right. and so you can see that we have two different kinds of sparkline again you can change this line to bar chart as much as uh, the way you want so why i said this is it would have created here because we are both changing the order sales by order month like both are in the same table so it would have created a bit of confusion so this is like this and say suppose i want another category to be added like yeah sub sub category here and i want it to be added in the rows so now we have this plus where you know we can have it sub category wise as well so yeah, this is a new feature which I thought that if I'm using an automation report or if I'm using a report which is basically, which basically consists of a lot of data and I want it and I want the client to have like a quick view of how this is, how the trend is. I think this is a way that it could be done. Uh, yeah, this is all I had for today.